Funding for this program is brought to you by the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Wood. We use it all the time. Homes, buildings, paper. Turns out, logging and sawmills were big in Cloquet and Duluth in the early 1900s, and they left behind some big problems. There's an $18 million cleanup project going on right now to remove massive amounts of wood waste dumped in the bay. This will create better habitat for local aquatic and terrestrial wildlife. But wood is natural, right? So what's the deal? This is where we start digging. Let's take a look at the map. Here's a cool upset that you can use to zoom in on the river. Look at all those polygons. The green ones are habitat restoration sites. It shows some of the work going on. Here, here's one on wood waste at Grassy Point. That's by the Bong Bridge. And it looks like Melissa Sholin might have some answers. She's coordinating the cleanup project at Grassy Point with the DNR. Let's ask her what's happening. Hi, Melissa. What can you tell us? Thanks, Emily. Yeah, I'd love to share some more about the project with you guys. So Grassy Point is a former wetland area that used to be the site of historic sawmills. And they would um, saw those logs right on the river and they would dump all of their unwanted wood pieces and sawdust and everything right into the river. We are taking out over 120,000 um, cubic yards of wood from that site. And it's really hard to kind of visualize how much that really is. But we did a little calculation. And so if you had a football field and you put 120,000 cubic yards of wood on top of it, it would go 56 feet high. So our project has been focused on improving that habitat, mainly by getting the wood waste out of the water and restoring the area. A question that I want to ask, um, is wood waste really pollution? Because it's something a lot of people don't think about. Yeah, so a lot of times when we think of pollution, yeah, people are thinking of um, chemicals that get into the water or into the sediment. Um, but yeah, the, the wood waste definitely is uh, a pollutant. So the wood waste doesn't have any chemicals in it, um, but it's just built up so much in the river that it's created a substrate or like a bottom that is not very hospitable to plants or to like the little tiny bugs that live in sediment that really form the basis of the food chain in the river. Without bugs, it's really not a great place for fish to hang out. What I saw when I looked through the water were boards, just boards. There were no plants, there were no fish, there were no bugs growing on the, on the bottom. So you look down there and you think, this isn't right. This isn't the way a river bottom is supposed to look. So what was the clue that really put you on this project and uh, made you feel like you could do something about this? The pilot project back in the 90s showed that if we removed wood waste from Grassy Point, we could get fish to return. We could get plants to grow in places that aren't growing now and that it could provide some real benefit. Even beyond the scope of the boundaries of the St. Louis River estuary, it's going to be beneficial. This is really the most biologically productive type of habitat in the Lake Superior watershed. This is the place where, where small fish are born and grow that go out into Lake Superior. This is the place that, that birds that migrate through the, the Lake Superior Basin will rest during migration and refuel. At Grassy Point, we actually had the opportunity to use the wood that came out of the water to build a, a new feature that kind of replicates the types of things that used to be there a hundred years ago. So we took the wood out of the water and we use it to build up this long island that kind of extends out across Grassy Point. Um, and then after the wood was done, we put a layer of soil and sediment on top of the island so that we could plant it to native species. We don't wanna to have to do a lot of maintenance. So we design these projects so that they, they function um, in a dynamic riverine system. I hope that as we clean things up, um, people are going to embrace the river and return to the river um, and then be good stewards of it themselves. 
Our journey through the Grassy Point project points us to a few important conclusions. It turns out wood can be a pollutant, depending on how it got there and how much of it we're talking about. It takes a lot of money and years to rebuild a productive ecosystem once the environment has been disturbed. The payoff? Projects like this one mean better habitat for native birds, fish, and people like ourselves to thrive. See you on the river. Programming is supported by Western Lake Superior Sanitary District, innovating solutions and reducing mercury pollution in the St. Louis River through research and community programs. Online at WLSSD.com.